Following on from the previous episode where I introduced the basic concepts of volume data, this episode starts to get a lot more interesting as we look at the basic principles around using volume data to assist with decision making. You see, just like raw price action, volume data is a fundamental aspect of the financial markets and without considering it, you're only seeing half the picture. But by understanding these basic principles of how volume data can be used, you can start to consider how you might implement this additional intelligence into your system's rules. Stay tuned. Okay, so let's start with a question. What is it that determines whether a pullback will remain a pullback or actually be the start of a reversal? It's a fundamental question and something we can have no certainty over. However, taking a probability-based approach, we can start to make a judgment about what we think will happen next. So let's say that the current price action is right here. And of course, at this point, we don't know if this is just a pullback of a previous trend or if it's actually the start of a reversal. So this is what could happen to the price action. And of course, if it does, we then have confirmation that this is a locked in pullback as part of a bigger trend. But the other outcome is this. And in this case, of course, it was the start of a reversal. And even with price action data alone, we can make certain probability based predictions about which outcome is more likely. And that might be based on things like what the time of day is. Are we at a session open or are we mid session? What does the preceding price action look like before this that we see on the screen? And that will give us clues as to what will happen next. Also, different assets have a different propensity for trending or maybe mean reverting. And so this also will give us clues about the subsequent price move. But if we also combine this with volume data, this adds an extra dimension to our analysis and hopefully starts to allow us to turn those probabilities of coming up with the right answer more in our favour. So what is it about volume data that can help us? Well, one of the most common uses is to help confirm what the commitment is for the collective traders that are participating in the price move of a specific asset. But also, of course, the converse of that is that it can provide a big picture of when that wider commitment to the price move is lacking. And so by attempting to interpret this volume information to ascertain what the commitment is in conjunction with the price action is what gives us that additional dimension of intelligence. So let's take a look at some of the generally accepted principles of the use of volume data. Let's again look at this particular part of this chart where we're currently in a pullback. But of course, we don't know yet if it will remain a pullback or if it will actually be the start of a reversal. So what's generally accepted is that if you have high volume or indeed rising volume, this is often an indication that there's a high level of commitment from the participants in the market to the move. And when there is that high level of commitment that in this example is pushing the price down, the probabilities are in the favor of a continuation of that move. And then the converse of this, if there is low volume or a reducing volume, then this is often an indication of a low level of commitment by the traders. And when this is the case, this turns the probability slightly more in favor of the price changing direction and in this case continuing with the trend. But there's a warning. This interpretation of volume information is just the very basic 
principle. In reality, it's a little bit more complex. You see, because during the course of a day, volume increases and decreases based on repeatable patterns that we're going to look at in the future, you can't just rely on that information alone. Because if the volume is high or rising, but it's always high or rising for that time of day, then clearly that isn't going to give you the information you need. So this is where the concept of a relative-based analysis of the volume data comes in. Is it higher than usual for that time of day? Or is it lower than usual for that time of day? And it's that type of analysis that will actually give you what you need. And that is going to be the topic of the next episode, where I'll show you techniques that you can use to interpret the volume data based on that relative behavior. So hopefully you're beginning to get an idea of how we can use volume data in order to turn those probabilities slightly more in our favor. So please do remember to subscribe so you get notified when that next episode I just talked about is released. And also remember to give me a like if you would, that would be very much appreciated. And now until next time, trade safe.